Okay. So how is everyone today? Good. Good. So in in three days and five hours, we're having an exam. Uh. Yay. Okay. Yep, it's exciting. So uh, in particular, it's on Monday. It's it's uh, at 7 p.m. 7 to 8:15 p.m. Uh, so in particular, that means that it is not in lecture and it is also not in the testing center. Rather, it'll be in a room when I finally post it in the grade book. <laughs> but it's some room on campus, some big room, uh, and you go there. It'll be just, just it, it's, it's a big lecture room is, is all that it is. Okay, to, to remind you of the way you should do it is that in the grade book you should look for the grades for quizzes one through five inclusive. And there's 10 individually graded exercises because there were three questions on each quiz, but only two questions per quiz were, were, were graded. Mm -hmm. And you get to select uh, up to six of these 10 for redo uh, uh, at the midterm. So in, in principle, you could do zero if, if you uh, so desired. Okay, good. Yes? <clears throat> What, so, okay, so I missed quiz four, so uh -huh. I won't have a scan document showing my Right, quiz four. I now I understand. So, uh, about an hour after lecture today, I'll post the keys. So then you'll be able to look at the keys. Other questions? Okay. <clears throat> yeah, lots of them. Okay, so let's get, let's get to business. So last thing we were talking about last time is that if we say something like let, uh, let little f be a function with domain Uh, which we'll denote by capital F, and let little g be a function with domain, which we'll denote by capital G. So suppose that uh, we've got two functions, and in order to evaluate little f, you have to supply an input that comes from big F, and in order to evaluate little g, you have to supply an input that comes from big G. So then we could take these, uh, these two little machines. So we could take the F machine and the G machine and arrange them like so. So you give an X to the F machine and it produces for you an F of X. And if you were to give an X to the G machine, it would produce for you a G of X. Uh, then we can make uh, a new machine, which I'll call, I think last time I called it, I, I, the combination I did was plus, so just, just to be different, I'll do uh, multiply. So we could give an x to this machine, it makes a copy of each, uh, two copies of it, so that uh, it can give one to the F machine and one to the G machine, and then it takes those outputs and combines them back together by computing F of x multiply g of x. And then the name that we're going to give to this output is f product g evaluate at x. So for those of you who <coughs> have seen some of this before, I'll just, rem <coughs> pardon me, remark that that's a solid dot, not an open dot. <coughs> okay. <coughs> so if this is the way the machine works, that this big machine contains two little machines. In order for this piece of the, of, of the machine to work, what, where must x be in order for this part to work? 
in the do in in function f's domain. Because of this, we know that x has to be in big F. <coughs> and because of this part, what has to be true in order for this part to work? Oh, look, I just smeared all that. <laughs> Uh, yeah, for this part to work, it must be the case that x is in g. So in order for the whole thing to work, what must be true? On the one hand, x has to be in f. It has to be in both. And what's the name for being in both sets? Intersection. So. In order for the whole thing to work, it must be the case that x is an f intersect g. <coughs> so, for example, I could say, well, how about we take little f uh, of x is 3x plus 4 on the interval, say, 2 to 13, and little g is x squared plus 1 on the interval, say, 5 to 20. So we have two functions. Uh, first request is find uh, a simplified, simplified expression for f product g evaluated at x. So what is it that I'm requesting of you in plain language? Well, I want you to take this f of x and that g of x, the expressions that define them, and I want you to multiply them together and collect like terms. So f product g evaluated at x, well, that should be f evaluated at x multiplied by g evaluated at x. So now I'm going to make an error, and I'd like for someone to tell me what my error is. Uh, <clears throat> so, 3x plus 4 multiplied by x squared plus 1. No parentheses, right? So, it's, it needs to be all of f multiplied by all of g. That's, what, that's the meaning here. Uh, however, the only two things that are being multiplied right now are the 4 and the x squared. Why is it that the only two things being multiplied right now are the 4 and the x squared? And for example, why is x squared not also multiplying the 3x? Okay, I agree with that. I'm fishing for a phrase that starts with O. That one. <laughs> the order of operations, right? Because the order of operation says that this is occurring first. Okay, so to get it to be right, every time you substitute something in, it is you, often necessary, but always a good idea to parenthesize what's being substituted in. So now it's correct. Okay, then now I want you to multiply it out and collect like terms. So that would be 3x cubed, uh, and then plus 3x uh, plus 4x squared plus 4. And then I guess to write them in descending order of degree, 3x cubed plus 4x squared plus 3x plus 4. <coughs> Okay. 
Any question about this one? Okay, so now second question. Please find the domain of f product g. <clears throat> what do you think? Yes? Would it be bracket five to thirteen? Yes. It would be five to thirteen. Now, why 5 to 13? Right. It's because, let's consider, could, it, could you evaluate the product function at 2? Why not? I, it doesn't seem to me that difficult to plug 2 into that. <coughs> why couldn't you do it at 2? Right, because 2 is part of f's domain, which means that, in a sense, you could do this part of the machine. But it's not in g's domain, which means you couldn't do that part of the machine. Okay? So, so the answer is going to be the intersection of these two. So they'd be 2 to 13, and then intersect 5 to 20, which is 5 to 13. Okay, now for those of you who uh, are having difficulty doing that kind of thing in your head, I'll remind you that you can do it on, with pencil and paper in the following way. You can say, well, 2 to 13, I'll plot it, and 5 to 20, I'll plot it. So 2 to 13 would look something like this. So 2 to 13 would be that much. So now I'm going to plot 5 to 20. So where is 5 with regards to 2 and 13? In between them, right? So here-ish. And then where is 20 with regards to all these? Past, right? So over here. So now that we have the drawing, how, do you, how is it that you answer the question? Yeah, where's the overlap? Do you, do you observe that, oh, it's between, it's between 5 and 13. That's where the overlap is. Good. So any question about this one? <clears throat> OK. So then I could ask a question just like this, but instead of saying the product function, instead of doing multiply, I could use add or subtract or whatever. But all of those things, add, subtract, multiply, divide, those are things you can do with numbers. So there's something that you can do, and, and, and you can do all those things with functions also. But there's something you can do with functions that you just can't do with numbers, and that is the following. So this is called composition. So again, if we have two functions, let f and g be functions. Then we could take the g machine, provide to it an x, and it would produce for us a g of x. And then suppose that immediately after the g machine, we make an f machine. So we're going to take the output of G and make that the input of F. Then what will come out of the F machine? So that is to say, if, if I put a 3 here, what would come out? F of 3. And if I, put a, if I put a 10 here, what would come out? F of 10. And if I put a giraffe here, F of giraffe, right? So then. I'm putting a g of x here. What comes out? f of g of x. That's what comes out. 
So this is like an assembly line, right? Where you have some input and then the machine, you know, makes some whirring noises and then out comes the G of X. And then now the output of this machine is the input to the next one. And you hear saws and cats screaming and all kinds of and then out comes this one. So the name for this, the name for this, for doing functions in this way, this is called composition. And the way that you denote that is with F and then open circle G evaluate at X. So, so when I was when I was saying that that when I was writing product and saying that's a closed dot, it was because uh, I knew we were eventually going to write this and this is an open one. So this is F uh, F composed with G. And this 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 is the thing one of the things that makes functions very different than numbers because you can't do this with numbers right numbers don't have inputs and outputs okay functions have inputs and outputs so you can wire the inputs and the outputs together like this <coughs> okay uh, good so let's have an example <coughs> suppose that uh, f of x is 3x plus 4 and suppose that g of x is x squared plus 1. So in two columns, left and right, I want you to find a simplified expression for f composed with g evaluated at x and 2. Same thing for g composed with f evaluated at x. <clears throat> okay, so since this is the first time I've made this request, <clears throat> I'll do the first one. So how do you write this without the composition operator? That is to say, without the circle. Right, in this way. That's how you do it. So f of g of x. OK. So now, I'm going to cover up the g of x for a moment, because that, that's kind of what makes it look complicated. And what I want you to look at is that the name for the input uh, we'll just we'll just call this uh, input. What is what does f do with an input? It makes three input plus four. So if the input happened to be twelve, it would be three times twelve and then plus four. And if it happened to be a banana, it would be three banana plus four. And what is it that I'm covering up? I'm covering up a g of x. Well, necessarily it must do three and then g of x plus four. That's what it does. <clears throat> okay, all that what I did is I replaced that, just considered this to be a placeholder, and I replaced it with whatever was in there. There was a g of x in there, so that's what I put right there. So now what does g of x do? It's x squared plus 1. So this would be 3, and then x squared plus 1 plus 4. And then now, uh, this is a, an exercise that you're familiar with. So 3x squared and then plus 3 plus 4 is 7. So now you please do a similar thing for this one.
Okay, so in the interest of time, I'll get started. So how do I write this without the composition operator? Very good, g of f of x, like so. And then now I need to look, well, what does g do with its input? Well, it does input squared and then adds 1. So uh, that means that it would have to be input squared and then add 1. And then, well, what is f? It's 3x plus 4. So that would be 3x plus 4 all squared and then add 1. And then multiply this out and collect like terms. 9x squared plus 24x's plus 16 plus 1, 17. OK. So I'd like for you to observe. Uh, well, how about with numbers? What's 3 plus 5? Do you have a question? Uh, because there's 3x times 4x, that's 12 of them. And then there's 4x times 3x, that's 12 more of them. Uh, so altogether, there's 24 of them. So what's, what's 3 plus 5? Not a trick question. <laughs> 8, right? And well, what's 5 plus 3? Also 8. Okay. So what, what is that an example of? Fishing for a C word. Yeah, that one. The commutative property of addition. Similarly, what's 3 times 5? 15. How about 5 times 3? Also 15. And what's this an example of? The commutative property of multiplication. So you're telling me that, that adds and multiplies commute. That is to say, you can add in any order that you like, you can multiply in any order that you like, uh, and, and, and the result will not, not change. Is composition commutative? Yes. No. <laughs> <laughs> Had to be one. <laughs> uh, so is it commutative? No. Why not? You don't get the same answer. Not the same, right? Is F composed with G? The same as G composed with F? Are these the same? No, they're not the same. Okay, now I, I claim to you that this is a totally natural and normal uh, and expected thing. Of course, composition cannot commute. So, to see why composition couldn't possibly commute, at least not all the time, I'd like for you to consider that we have a, that we have a, we're, we're managing a doll factory. Okay, that makes dolls. Okay, and <clears throat> dolls that wear clothes. That's all, that's all that I need. Uh, so, we're a general, general purpose doll manufacturing. Yeah. <laughs> so, suppose that we have a machine, a machine that, that puts on the left sock, which I'll call the L machine. It puts on the left sock. And suppose that we have another machine that puts on the right sock, which I'll call the R machine. So we could, we could wire these two machines on in, either, in, in, in two possible orders. We could say that we're going to give the doll, right, gonna, the doll, and then puts into the left machine first, and then output is into the right machine, and then goes like this. Okay, or, that, that's one possibility, or it could have been like this, <clears throat> that here's the, the left sock machine and the right sock machine, and here's the doll. <clears throat> and we could say, well, it goes into the right sock machine first and then the left sock machine and then comes out. So I have a question for you. Suppose that this is all happening behind closed doors and then the doll comes out and it's been fully prepared, would you be able to tell which machine it went through first? Yeah. No. no, you wouldn't be able to tell. Doesn't matter what order the left sock machine and the right sock machine are in. Doesn't matter. So now let's say that we have the underwear machine and the pants machine. Uh, the 
pants machine. And then we have the doll. <laughs> Okay, so suppose we put it in the underwear machine first and then take that out and then output that through the pants machine. Well, this result is, uh, you know, I don't know, what's a doll that has pants? Ken. Ken? Okay, this is Ken. This is a Ken doll, right? Underwear first and then pants. Whereas, whereas, uh, if you do pants first and then underwear, this is like uh, Superman, right? Yeah. Yep, that's Superman. Are these the same? No, they're not the same. Of course they're not the same. Okay. Composing, composing couldn't possibly be the same because then you could do things like you could say, well, I know I'm not feeling good tonight, so I know I'm not going to want to do the dishes after dinner, so I'm going to go ahead and do them now. <laughs> does, does that, could, could that work? No, that can't work, right? Things have to be ordered in time. <clears throat> Good. So, any question about uh, any of that? Okay, so now we're going to, for the rest of the day, it's going to be, um, <clears throat> it's going to be opposite day. Okay. <laughs> so now we're in section 3.5 called transformations. Okay, so, uh, well, to make it, to make it clear, uh, what I mean by opposite day is I'd like for you to imagine the following, that, um, that this sheet of paper and this pencil are free-floating in space, and you can see absolutely nothing else. There's, you have no point of reference whatsoever. You, you can only see the pencil and the piece of paper, and you, you can't see my hands. If, so, yeah, I'll put my hand down here. Okay, then I'll, I'll do this. Okay, so are you ready to watch? I'm going to move the pencil uh, to the right. So are you ready for, for me to move the pencil to the right? Okay, here we go. I move the pencil to the right. Now I'm going to move the pencil to the left. To which you might object and say, no, you're clearly moving the paper. <laughs> okay, well, so that, that is you not buying into to the premise that you have no point of reference whatsoever. What is, if you have no points of reference whatsoever besides the pencil, and, and the paper, then really what is the difference between the pencil moving right and the paper moving left? There is no difference. Those, those, are, those are, ex are, are mathematically equivalent um, points of view. So now what we're going to do today is we're going to take functions and we're going to move them around. We're going to take functions and we're going to, we're going to move their plots around, but actually, actually the plots aren't going to move what we're going to do is we're going to move the coordinate system out from underneath them. So if we want a function to move to the right, what we're actually going to do is we're going to move the coordinate system to the left. And that will have the effect of moving the function to the right. Similarly, we're not going to move functions down. We're going to move the coordinate system up. We're going to move the coordinate system up. Or to, to make another real, wor real world analogy, uh, I have, I have two kids, and one of them is six, and she's little, of course, because all six-year-olds are little. And uh, the state fair is on, and she more or less can't ride any, any of the rides because she's six, and that makes her little just uh, by virtue of that. But then she's also little just because she's just an extremely little person, even among her colleagues. Okay, so, and she doesn't like that. <laughs> okay, now. Uh, if, I, if, if I were magical, then I could fix the whole issue uh, by just, you know, stretching her out. Just, okay, now you can write all the rights. 
Uh, but if I were magical, then I'd also probably take the par parental point of view since I'm already a parent and say, you know what the problem is? It's not, it's not her, it's all these rides. All these rides are too big. That's the problem. So then if I was magical, then I could just shrink all the rides and keep her just the way she is, and then she'd be able to ride the rides. Right? So if we want to make a function bigger, that's not what we're going to do. We're not going to make the function bigger. What are we going to do? Mm -hmm. We're going to make the coordinate system itself smaller. Yeah. It would be like a real lovely prank if someone, if, you know, you, if you, you know, maybe even right now it's happening. You live in an apartment and, and someone dear to you is now busily at work taking all of the door frames and the ceiling and all of your furniture and making them only two-thirds as tall as they were previously. Right? <laughs> And then you walk in, and you would be, you'd be like a giant walking around. You'd be able to see the top of all the things you couldn't see the top of. Okay, good. So, here we go. So that's what I mean when I say it's going to be opposite day. So in the first place, we have a horizontal shift. So let F be a function and consider the, gra uh, the graph y is f of x. The transformation x becomes x minus c is horizontal shift by c units. Okay, so let's, uh, let's try and see why that is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay, so let's start out with a plot that we know. So how about the plot of y is x squared? So this is a plot that you've been requested to memorize. What does y is x squared look like? Parabola. So this is a known, <coughs> a known plot. Okay. So, suppose that, uh, so what I want you to observe is that, that there's, two, there's two bits here. I gave, you, I gave you an equation and a picture, so now what I'm going to give you is I'm going to give you another picture and I want you to provide for me the equation. So suppose that I say that, okay, here's another picture that's similar to the first one, except uh, I've taken this and I've moved it over to uh, three. I've done that. So now it looks like this. So it's like I, it's like I grabbed the parabola and moved it over to uh, position three. <clears throat> My question for you is, is what is the equation that does this? Yeah? What will it be? Y is something. So, so far we've got it. Y is? It's x minus 3 all squared. It's x minus 3 all squared. Uh, and so he here's the thing. At this point, many students say, Wait a second, wait a second. It's moving to the right. Why are we subtracting? <laughs> Why are we subtracting? Right, correct. So I'll say it like this. The proceed it's, it's not that we took the parabola and moved the parabola to the right. That's not really, in a sense, what happened. In a sense, really what happened is, is that 
is that I held the parabola down with this finger. I held it down and then grabbed the coordinate system and pulled the coordinate system to the left three units. So it's the, it's the coordinate system which is being subtracted from. And this is what you see after you do that. OK. So now, my experience furthermore tells me that some students are like, OK, um, maybe. Uh, so now I'm going to try and get the last fraction of you to, to come over uh, to, the, to, the, to the dark side, I guess, and say, well, what if you, if you input x is 0 into this equation, then what would the y output be? 0. zero. That's, that's why it's going through the origin there. That's why this point is here. Because when x is 0, y is 0. Now I have a different question for you concerning just that equation right there. What x input would you have to provide so that the y output is 0? What x would you have to plug in so that y is 0? 3. So you're telling me that when you plug in 3, you should get 0? Is that what that says? When x is 3, when you're at horizontal coordinate 3, are you at vertical coordinate 0? You are. Right there. That's the point. This is the point. 3, 0. OK. <clears throat> Let's try again. What if, what if instead of doing that, uh, I say, OK, well, um, now I want it to look like this. <clears throat> no, uh, this time I'll give you the equation. I'll say that the equation is y is x plus 1, and we're going to square that. So last time I gave you the picture and asked for the equation. This time I'm giving you the equation and asking for the picture. So what is happening to the coordinate system? The coordinate system is moving to the right by one. And what's happening to the plot? OK. Good. So, so I, want you to th I want you to be able to think of it from, from two points of view. So one point of view, you could say, ah, the plot is staying still, and the coordinate system is moving to the right. Or, uh, OK, I'll, I'll consider the coordinate system to be staying still, and the plot is moving to the left. Either, either way. <clears throat> Good. So any question about this? <clears throat> Okay, similarly, for that equation right there, what x would you have to plug in so that the output is 0? Is that what the plot says? It does say that. For, thi for, for this one, you'd need, well, if you plugged in negative 1, x is negative 1, then that'd be zero, uh, negative 1 plus 1 squared is 0, and then the output is 0. <coughs> okay, good. So if you can do a... Uh, if you can do a horizontal shift, well, then you can do a vertical one, too. So vertical shift. So let f be a function. Consider its graph. y is f of x, the transformation, y becomes y minus k, is a vertical shift, uh, 
uh, of k units. So that is to say, uh, there's some elevators right behind me over there, and uh, I could I could get get in them and go to the next next floor. But the, in a sense, the mathematician's point of view is that when I get in the elevator and press the button, then actually I'm not moving. The whole building is just going down, right? I'm just staying perfectly still, and and the whole building is moving. Okay. But the other point of view is is also just uh, as valid. Okay. Good. Uh, another way you could think of a horizontal shift, <laughs> a horizontal shift, is you can think of, uh, you know, when you're in your car and you and you're and you're you're driving along, you know, you could just think, well, the Earth is actually just rotating underneath me, right? Just and I'm I'm staying still. Okay. <clears throat> so how about this one? Let's start with a plot that we know. So here's another one we're supposed to have memorized. The y, uh, y is the square root of x. So how does it look? How does it look? This is something that you're expected to know. Really? Yes. <laughs> this, remember those function families where we wrote so many functions on the page? This was one of them. So this one is like half of a sideways parabola. It's the one that looks like this. Okay, you only get, why do you only get a uh, plot on the right side? Because you can't give negative inputs to the square root. Okay, so you only get stuff on the, on the right side. So how about, how about um, I ask, what would what would this one be? So in the first place, that point right there is the origin. Suppose that I move it up on the y-axis and I move it to like, uh, say, 4. And that the result looks like this. Then what's the equation of the plot I just drew if th this one is exactly like <coughs> that one except moved up? I agree, but I want you to write it a different way. <laughs> so specifically, I'm going to write it in this way. y minus 4 is the square root of x. Because in this point of view, in this point of view, what we did was we said, OK, well, um, I'm going to hold the square root still, and I'm going to grab the coordinate system, and I'm going to pull it down four units. And then that's what you would see. If you pulled the coordinate system down, it would look like that. Now, you might object and say, well, it appears to me that I could uh, put the 4 on the other side, and it would be, a, be just as true. And I don't dispute that. And this, this would be a fine answer, in, in the sense that it would be correct. But here's the thing. Suppose that I ask you this question. And, and suppose that, say, I move the point to right here. <clears throat> so the, that point is now at negative 2, negative 1. And <clears throat> it's like that. So now it's like I moved it down there. Now what's the equation? Right. So you need so so let's ask ourselves, was there a horizontal change? Yes. Did it move horizontally, that is to say left and right? No. Well, not this one. So did this one move left, left and right some? Yeah, it did. It moved to the left that much. 
So the fact that it's moving horizontally says is a statement that some, one of the variables was played with. A horizontal movement means which variable was played with. The x's were played with. So the fact that it moved horizontally means that we have that x has to become what? x plus 2, right? That's saying move the coordinate system to the right. Okay, and the fact that it was, did it move vertically? <coughs> yes. It did move vertically. So that means that we also played with the y, so y becomes what? y plus 1. So as a result, as a result, you take the original equation, you replace the x with x plus 2, and you replace the y with y plus 1, and you obtain the following, that y plus 1 is square root x plus 2. Now, I make no objection. I agree entirely that you could move the 1 over to the other side. So let me do that. <clears throat> if y You could write it like this. y is the square root of x plus 2, and then uh, plus 2, and then plus 1. But here's the problem with this, and that is that when you write it in this way, in this way, the way I'm advocating, and you have a look at that one, well, which variable is that one playing with? Y. It's playing with the y's. So this one signifies a vertical change. And this two is playing with which variable? The x's. So it signifies a horizontal change. But when you write it like this, it's, it is to me, and in my experience to you, <laughs> far less clear. Which variable? Oh, wait. That should be a minus one. Y'all didn't even catch me. You got to catch the instructor when they do something silly like that. Yep, click, click. Too polite. <laughs> so polite. So, so this, this one right here, this one right here, looking at it, which variable is that one playing with? It's playing with the y's. It's playing with the y's. It's, it's causing a change in the output variable, not a change in the input variable. So that's a little bit of a problem because it's all the way over here with all these x's. Right? But it's actually affecting the y's. So as a result, when, when you're thinking about the, this, this topic, I encourage you to write th the the things dealing with y over with the y's rather than on the other side. Yes? So the choice is how will it be written? Will it be written as y equals? So if you want us to draw something on a graph, are you going to present it as y plus 1? Yeah, I'm going to write, I'll, I'll, I'll probably mix it up. So you've got to just, you've got to be able to translate between, between the possibilities. Uh, notice also that even though this, this one can be moved side to side, Right? You, can, you can kind of make this one be over here with the x's or over here with the y's. This two can't be moved around. Right? You can't get the two over there. It's not going to work because it's inside of the radical. Okay, but you can always make this thing with the y's and you can always make that one with the x's. Good. What time is it? Ah, that's enough. We've done enough for today. So have a nice weekend. See you on Monday and also on Monday.